Now let's go ahead and let's build get employee by id rest api. So get all employees rest api will return all the employees right okay so get all employees rest api will return all the employees to the client now we are going to build a rest api which will return uh, you know specific employee uh, with given id okay we are going to build get employee by id rest api which will just you know return a particular employee by id to the client so go to employee controller again and uh, let me just write the comment here build get employee by id rest api and we want to follow the same steps like uh, controller layer is depends on service layer so first we'll make a changes in the service layer and then we'll get back to controller layer so go to employee service and here we are going to define a method again in the interface so the return type of method is employee and the method name is get employee by id and we are going to pass id as a method argument to this method okay and go to employee service imp class and we are going to implement this method over here So here what we're going to do is we're going to simply fetch the employee object from the database by you know passing id so this is employee employee equals to we're going to use the employee repository here and it has a method called find by id method right yeah find by id and we're going to pass id And look at here find by id method returns optional okay optional object so we are going to store a result of find by id in optional object so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply call here optional so make sure that you choose optional from java.util package and this is generic so we pass type as an employee All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply check whether this optional object contains the employee object or not. For that we're gonna use if condition here. If employee dot is present, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply return employee dot get okay so get method basically returns content of this optional object so else what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply throw the resource not found exception resource not found exception and look at here the resource name is the employee and the field name is id and the field value is id that's it and it internally creates a message right so look at here this is a message the employee not found with id and then id value it will create a proper message and it will pass to a runtime exception and a runtime exception will throw this message in a console okay perfect so let's get back to employee service sample that's it so instead of using epls here you can also use lambda expression so let me also show you that uh, approach so let me just comment out this code and we simply return employee repository dot find by id and then we pass id here it returns optional so optional has a method called or else throw method okay so we're going to use or else throw method to throw the exception if resource not found in database and if you can just mouse over on or else throw so this method uh, look at here it uses supplier functional interface and we're going to use a lambda expression to implement supplier functional interface 
and uh, look at here this is the syntax for lambda expression a new resource not found exception and we're gonna pass argument to this constructor so post argument is the resource name that is employee and second argument the field that is id and third argument is field value so, all right it's pretty simple isn't it so instead of writing these line of code these number of uh, you know lines of code we can you know in a single statement we can write this logic by using lambda expression and this is the preferred approach so whenever uh, you know you have a opportunity to you know use java 8 features like lambda expression or functional interface then make sure that you will use these features perfect now once we complete the service layer let's head over to the employee controller now we're going to build a rest api right so just type public we're going to first create a method and then we make this method as a rest api by uh, you know annotating add get mapping annotation so again we're going to use add response entity as a return type and we're going to pass the employee as a type okay and the method name is get employee the id okay and let's annotate this method with add get mapping annotation okay and uh, we are going to pass id here that is long id and uh, from the client the rest API should get id right so for that what we're going to do is we're going to configure here a path variable within a curly basis just give id okay now in a path variable i mean this is basically a url template variable okay for example if our rest api i mean the client uses the rest api url like this localhost colon 8080 slash api slash employees slash one all right this this id is uh, dynamic okay this one uh, i mean the path variable is dynamic so we can pass any id here one two three etc so that's the reason uh, we are going to you know provide this id within a curly basis here so this is a syntax to get a path variable and path variable is dynamic okay and we are going to retrieve a employee with id one in this example all right now this you know uh, url template variable has a value one so we are going to get a value from this variable path variable for that what i'm going to do is we're going to use add path variable annotation okay so here i'm going to use add path variable annotation here and the name of the the variable is id right so we are going to pass here id so whatever you name give here in a path variable that you should give here as well okay and this id name can be different okay for example i can give the employee id okay this so this id should match this one and the id which we pass to add path add path variable annotation perfect isn't it now we are going to return response entity object so for that i'm going to call return here new and then response entity and we are going to call this call this overloaded response entity constructor here because it takes body as well as status so just call employee service and it has a method called get employee by id and just pass the id here that is employee id and in this case the http status is 200 that is okay that's it pretty simple isn't it 
so get employee by id rest api just returns i employee to the client with status code okay perfect now what we're going to do is we're going to run our spring boot application and we test this rest api using postman client so go to spring boot uh, backend application so this is a main spring boot application class so we are going to run this class now so make sure that uh, you will stop the existing instance of the server so just start spring boot application now all right our spring boot application is uh, up and running now okay now let's head over to postman rest client and we are going to test get employee by the rest api so in order to test get employee by the rest api i am going to create a new request so click on plus icon here and just type http localhost 8080 slash api slash employees and make sure that you choose add get http method and we are going to retrieve a particular employee with id 1 so we are going to pass slash 1 here and hit send button and there we go the rest api you know uh, return this employee object with id 1 all right it means that get employee by id rest api is working as expected now if you try to retrieve an employee with id 2 here we need to just pass a 2 id as a 2 here and just hit send button and there we go the client got a response that is the employee with id 2 and the status code 200 okay all right it means that we have successfully implemented get employee by id rest api